Good morning and welcome to Valley Views. I'm your host, Glenn Edison. We're certainly glad to have you today. And we're also very thankful for BTC Fiber for our sponsor of our program. And today we have with us Michelle Holt. She is the executive director, executive director, I should say, of the Workforce Board, which works with the American Job Centers. And Michelle, it's good to have you today. And we're certainly glad to have you uh, with us. And we want to get... Uh, Asked you a few questions about well about the labor force and about jobs and things of that nature. So um, just tell us just exactly kind of what what you do and how you help the people in this area. Okay, yeah, and and thank you for having me and thank you for this opportunity to come um, present some of the services and and get the information out to the community um, here in Bledsoe County. Um, as you as you said, I'm Michelle Holt, um, and I'm the executive director for the Workforce Board for the 10 counties that we represent in Southeast Tennessee. Um, I also work for the Southeast Tennessee Development District. That's where our board offices are housed. Um, and I'm the director of workforce development there for that, for that agency. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with them and the work that they do in the communities around economic and community development and some of the other work that they do on the aging and disability side with helping the elderly folks in the community. Um, and with the workforce side, what we head up is, you know, the so services and oversight of the public workforce system in our region and the performance of that system. And that's sort of where the board comes in on some of that. And today I'll talk to you a little bit about the board um, and then some services for the job seekers through the American Job Center um, and then how the employers access that, that system oh, okay. too. Um, with the board, like I said, with the oversight um, and, and the work that we do with workforce development in the 10 counties that we serve, and those 10 counties, um, I'll let you know, are McMinn, Meigs, Ray, Sequatchie, Bledsoe, Polk, Bradley, Hamilton, Marion, and Grundy. Hmm. So we serve all 10 of those counties. Um, and what we do primarily is some of the planning around workforce development in, in the region, uh, putting together our strategic plan so that we can um, work on initiatives that, that are true to what we try to do and uh -huh. the things that we need to do. Um, with the board, um, you know, in planning, we look for insight from our business and industry uh -huh. leaders, and those, is, those are the members that are made up from the board. Uh -huh. um, we look at our labor market information, analyze that, um, and use information that we glean from our board members who are business and industry leaders and how we um, we work toward the future and the things that we want to that we want to help further develop um, we also work on um, securing other grant opportunities um, from the board level typically you know the funds that we receive um, which come through the workforce innovation and opportunity act are limited uh -huh. um, we have to do lots of things with those you know, operate our American Job Centers, provide training services to individuals, um, grant contracts and that sort of things, and they're limited. So we work, we come alongside as the board and help support other partner agencies and programs oh, okay. that need support for um, garnering additional funding. Um, we want to engage a variety of employers on our board right. that cover the sectors that are um, in demand that lead to the the things that we want to happen in our in, in the workforce in the next few years. Um, we um, have Mr. Ethan Lloyd on our board for Bled to represent Bledsoe County um, as part of you know a lot of the initiatives that many people are working on and the and the trends are around you know broadband and those types of things uh -huh. and and IT um, is critical so we look for for individuals like him to provide insight on some of that and to help provide us um, knowledge about you know the uh, Bledsoe County residents that are looking for work. We work closely with our local elected officials and what their needs are and what they see coming um, as the funds come directly to them. We just help manage those for, the, for them. And then lastly, the thing that we do is uh, coordinate technology efforts um, around the American Job Center. And that's just kind of growing the use of technology to help serve individuals out, um, which can help, you know, as a cost saving sometimes and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. so that's kind of what the board does in an overarching view. And then how that connects to the American Job Centers is through our virtual um, American Job Center and then the five brick and mortar facilities that we have across our 10 county uh -huh. regions. The five centers that we have consist of two comprehensive centers, one in Chattanooga and one in McMinn County that house all of the partners that make up um, what they call the comprehensive center, which um, houses you know, not only uh, the Department of Labor folks and uh, the Workforce Innovation and Act 
Innovation and Opportunity Act grant funds that come in for training, but it also houses um, individuals like adult education that help um, uh -huh. individuals connect with high school diploma um, to, to receive their high school diploma. It also houses um, like SNAP ENT, which um, benefits individuals who are receiving those benefits can also access employment oh. and training funds. Uh -huh. um, also vocational rehabilitation and that sort of thing. So. Um, those are all housed there. Now our affiliate sites, which are in Dayton, which is the closest one to Bledsoe County uh -huh. um, and Cleveland over in Bradley County, um, and then over in Jasper and Marion County, um, we have smaller centers that are available for individuals to walk in if they if they want to. Um, one of the things that we're, we're excited about this year, um, many of you I'm sure have known that we're in the middle of a pandemic and right. it, it limits in person right. sometimes. So we've been able to, with the, the state of Tennessee, with some CARES Act funding that they received to help develop out a virtual AJC. Oh, and that virtual okay. AJC lets individuals go to that website and enter some basic information uh -huh. about what, it, um, what their needs are and maybe can help get them connected quickly, um, maybe answer some of their questions and they don't have to travel in. Um, still getting the services they need but in a in a much faster way than having to maybe commute or oh, whatever. That's good. And that's not to say that we that we don't want to promote our brick and mortar right. facilities. We still need those. There are many individuals that still need help accessing those services. Um, but that's just something new that we're that we're trying um, as we had to pivot, you know, during the pandemic right. to try to get services out. As all have had to do, you know, right. our educators have had to do that, you know, and different things. So. We're pleased to have that roll out. And we've also got a new software called Premier Virtual for employers to use. Um, oh. They can do virtual job fairs. Um, and that's set up through the American Job Center. Um, so that's two of our virtual things oh, that we good. have. And by the way, all of this information can be accessed on the banner at our website, which is secareercenter.org. Um, SE is short for Sam Edward, then careercenter.org. Um, you know, at the banner at the top, the first thing you'll see are the virtual services. Right. Then you'll see the job seeker and then the services to the employer. Well, when it comes to the job seeker, typically what you what you see is, you know, when individuals come into the American Job Center, they're looking for a job. Right. Well, what is that? You know, how does that happen? Um, or, or what's the purpose and how, how does that flow work? Um, either they want an immediate job or they come in there looking for help on how can I get the job I want. Uh -huh. So what we what we do typically is you, you can access through the state's mainframe page, which is Jobs for TN. That's what mm -hmm. the American Job Centers use as well. That's the system that houses all the job orders and individuals looking for employment and that sort of thing. Um, they can access job listings across the state um, there that are posted. Um, they can also use what we call our resource room, uh -huh. which is a computer lab that has computers available. So maybe, you know, and I know a lot of individuals have, you know, been dealing with unemployment issues uh -huh. during this pandemic. Right. Um, many may not have had the technology or may not have had the connect or maybe have had connectivity issues right. where they needed some additional assistance or they got, you know, a question kind of hung them up on their claim or, you know, they can come in and use the computers in the resource room and we can help those individuals navigate through some of that. Um, it can often be difficult for individuals who's, you know, we've got people during this pandemic that never received unemployment. Right. Because it was such, there was, it was such a massive amount of claims that came in at one time and it, it bottlenecked the system. Uh -huh. Tennessee was fortunate that, that we didn't have a complete system crash like some states did. Uh -huh. But it did bottleneck because, you know, back in 2008 when we had the economic downturn, we were not... Um, you know, necessarily, um, what you wouldn't say they all happened overnight. Right. It was a period right. like over a few years, and they kept it kept increasing. Um, you know, but this was like in a matter of a week. You know, yeah. our unemployment rate went from three percent to sixteen percent. Right. So right. It, it bottlenecked the system a little bit, and I think individuals had difficulty. And I think some of the you know frustration with some was they're not unemployment claim specialists at the AJCs. We have right. individuals that can help you access the system and help you sort of navigate it. But those claims specialists have went to call centers years ago. So uh -huh. that's all handled, you know, for privacy reasons and, you know, specific training issues and that sort of thing. 
So we, but we do have that service available if individuals need help navigating through that process. That's something that they can do there. Um, they can also get, um, after they do that, maybe career counseling. They need uh -huh. more help. They need, you know, what do, what do I want to do? Um, you know, I've got my resume that I worked on in the resource room. I've applied for my unemployment, but that's not going to sustain me. There's not a job, you know, technically that I'm certain I can do right now, given the skills that I currently have. What do I do? Um, you know, we can help them with skills assessments. We can provide interest and aptitude assess assessments and help guide them through some of that complicated process, you know, in choosing a new career and a training path that would lead to right. that. Mm -hmm. Which gets me to, you know, we can also help with funding of some of those training opportunities oh, okay. once they that choose those. Um, uh, there are many individuals that, you know, have access to Pell Grants or the Tennessee Promise Grants or other things that are out there available, but it may not necessarily meet all the needs. They may need transportation assistance, you know. Uh -huh. We can help fund, you know, transportation reimbursement to get them back and forth to school if they need. Oh, okay. Tools, that's, that's you know, nice. a lot of the uh, technology programs offered at our TCAT community colleges, they, they require um, tools that can be quite expensive sometimes. And yes, our programs uh -huh. can help support that to get those individuals on a pathway to more self-sufficient employment. Um, that's just a, a nutshell of some of the things that we do, we provide for job seekers. Um, as far as employers, we also work with employers through our centers as well. Uh -huh. Even like I mentioned, virtually, we can work with them virtually. They also use the jobs for tngovernor website. Um, those employers can have access to have their jobs posted on um, our website. Uh -huh. We can provide them with qualified applicants, those same applicants that have came in looking for work. You know, we can also make referrals to employers on those. Uh -huh. We can provide um, pre-screening for employers um, for a set of requirements that they that they post in the job order and make that referral to oh, the employer okay. to save them some time. We can help them with developing if they've never um, done that. We can help them with um, developing out their job description. Say you got a small business and they're looking for some people in particular and they just don't have the manpower yet to right. do all that work, we can help with some of that to help get individuals connected to work um, that that they so desperately need. Um, and, and we have st staff, a staff of business service team members that, uh -huh. that work with those employers directly. Um, all that information is on our website, how to contact them um, and, and whatever else they need there with that. Um, we can also help them with co-advertising. And what that oh. means, like if they have a job order that they want to post, um, and we, we can do a flyer if they don't have one already available and uh -huh. post it to do a job fair to help them um, gain access to that and those sort of things. So oh. um, we also do, which is you know one of the things that nobody likes to talk about, but we do rapid response activities for employers. And what that is, is you know if an employer unfortunately has to do a mass layoff um, of a, you know, a lot of individuals and they're just not really certain how they manage that process we're we're in place to come in and we bring a team in and they oh, kind of okay. go over everything with those with those um, employees and the employer so that they get all the information on the front end obviously most people are interested in hearing about how do I get my unemployment insurance claim processed right. and that sort of thing but we also go in and talk to them about the training opportunities that they all qualify because they're a dislocated worker now right, right. Um, and that that money is available for those for those individuals as well we also have training dollars that employers can access to help oh. um, with training of those employees so let's for, say for instance you have individuals who were dislocated from company XYZ um, and they want to go to company ABC, um, but they don't necessarily have all the skills they need. Uh -huh. They're work ready, but they don't necessarily have all the skills they need, but the employer is willing to train them on those new skills. We have what we call on-the-job training contracts uh -huh. that we can do with employers oh, to okay. help provide training funds to them um, that would help offset some of those training costs for them. Right. Um, and it can be up to 50% for um, for the individual. So let's just say for over an eight week, week period, an individual is going to make $4,000. We can reimburse the employer 2000 of that to give this oh, person okay. a chance and help provide that training to them. Um, we also have what we call incumbent worker training grants. Uh -huh. um, and those are dependent upon funding. It's not part of our regular funding stream always, but we do try to usually make some of those available out of our regular allocation. 
Um, what that does is trains the existing workforce. Um, so if you have a company and say they bought a new piece of machinery, mm-hmm. um, but it's going to cost them $25,000 to have the supplier come in and train uh-huh. on this new equipment, right. they can apply to get a training grant for us to train those existing workers um, oh, okay. with that to, for the, to have that company come in and help do that. Yes, to help offset the cost. There's a little match requirement with, with that one, um, but it, it's still just something that, that's offered and it's available to employers in our community um, that, we, that we like to promote. So the last thing I know um, part of our business service team is they help work with employers that may not be um, mindful or know about tax credits that are available to employers oh, that okay. hire uh, targeted populations and that sort of thing. Uh-huh. They can help them make the connections on a lot of those as well. So um, there's a lot of great work that we do at the American Job Center. And I know like every other um, business, we have been impacted by COVID. Our seniors are currently open. They're seeing individuals um, practicing all the safety protocols Uh outlined by the CDC, social distancing, you know, wearing the mask, you know, cleaning, sanitizing after individuals but most importantly, limiting capacity. Uh-huh. Um, you know, obviously we're not gonna have a, we'll, we'll have a job fair, but we won't let 200 people in our building <laughs> right, at the right. same time. Right. Um, but we'll still, we'll still make that available um, to the employer. You know, and back in the summer, you know, we did a lot, we did a couple of drive-through job fairs. A lot of uh-huh. people were doing those. Um, you know, and that's in the winter doesn't work always as well no, sometimes. No. But um, but we do, we do try to make that service still available and try to work around the protocols. So far, we've I think we've done um, a pretty decent job at, at uh-huh. limiting the, the with the number and, and that sort of thing. Um, we just want to say that that we're here um, and we look forward to you know working with individuals. I think you know I looked Bledsoe County's unemployment rate was six point two in December. Yes, um, which means uh, roughly about two hundred and eighty, I think two eighty six individuals that were that were looking for employment. Um, you know. There are many companies that are that are in driving distance of Bledsoe County that we work with um, uh-huh. that we can help place individuals. Obviously, we also try to look to identify and work with our partner agencies on attracting you know business and industry to uh, Bledsoe County and other areas. But you know there are many ways that you can look at how you deliver those services, um, and we want to we want to be mindful that that we're taking the most holistic approach for the individuals that and well, meeting their needs. I think in the Valley I've seen uh, there's, I know uh, one new industry coming in Bledsoe, one that's come here, Sequatchie, and there's one in Marion County just announced, I believe. Um, that's hiring, uh-huh. um, yeah, Valmont Industries, I think they announced that they were gonna add about 75 or 65 jobs, I think, over uh-huh. the next year. Um, Nokian Tires in Dayton right. just had a big announcement. Um, you know, and that's the thing too, you know, a lot of times, you know, we we know um, like when a company announces that, that they're going to come to a community, a lot of times we begin to work with them early on uh-huh. in the process to help identify the, the skills gap. So, you know, if you're, if they're looking to hire machinists, you know, they want 25 machinists, a company that's coming in and we know they're not here. That gives us time to look to our training providers and help coordinate some of those training efforts so that we can get individuals trained. Uh Um, And the beauty of that is typically a lot of these um, positions are so in demand that let's just say they said they wanted 25 and when they get here it's only 12. The chances are those 12 that got trained can probably still go to work somewhere else with those skills. Right, right. Um, so we, we always look for that, you know, in places where we have limited access to training in Bledsoe County being one of those, we um, we do know it's a long distance to some. We do work with um, the all the training entities. I know a lot of people in Bledsoe County prefer to drive over to, to Crossville. The American Job Centers works with with all training providers. You know, we have uh-huh. Chattanooga State. I know. I mean, the time change with being in the Central and Eastern sometimes right. creates an issue. But I don't want people to worry about that. You know, we we work with with the um, individual and the employer and the training providers to do what's best for those and what their needs are. Um, we have approached um, Little County Schools and are trying to have conversations with them about how we bring training programs for adult learners at night to maybe to the high school uh-huh. with what they have there and some of their CTE labs and that sort of thing. Um, oh, yeah. So some of those are still ongoing conversations that we're trying to do work. Because one of the one of the governor's um, tasks that for Department of Labor and Workforce Development was to do more outreach to rural communities. And certainly, you know, 
you know, you have issues that you try to work through in urban and rural communities. Right. And, you know, at times they're, they're very different, but at the same, but the results the same, typically, you know, you're uh-huh. trying to get, you're trying to get individuals into employment, no matter what the, right. the situation. So you just kind of have to, have to know your, what you need to do based on what's there and what's available. Um, it, it may be very different what, you know, the need here may be, can we look at grant opportunities to provide transportation, like a bus transportation uh-huh. from, you know, here over to another part of, um, our workforce area to to carry people to employment um like do we we need to look at ways that we can take these grant funds and bring see if we can bring a class over here and it may not be a permanent class but it's a class that we offer maybe two or three times a year that mm-hmm. that will have access to high skill in demand training opportunities for residents so um we we don't really we don't automatically throw anything or any idea out the window when we're when we're trying to solve workforce issues we're always looking for ways to improve what we have and certainly um working in rural communities is what has been one of our targets and that really it, it, other you know the governor did mandate that we work on that but that was part of our planning as well um we had a lot of interest from our uh-huh. you know local elected officials and business leaders you know to have have more emphasis on some of that so we're trying to work some of those strategies at pre pandemic we were coming to the Pikeville Municipal Center, I think one day a week, uh-huh. um, and trying to provide services there. It, it was just kind of starting to take off a little bit when the pandemic hit, and then we yeah. had to scale back a little bit on that. You know, uh-huh. we're hoping to get some of that reinstated, um, but we're also hoping that maybe we can increase some access points out in our communities. And what that really means is, you know, that there's a place where someone can go and they can interface with someone, you know, virtually maybe even, and and get some of the information they need because. Because what you sometimes you help eliminate some of the uh, multiple trips right, with right. some of that. So um, at least we can work on work on some of those things. Um, we're excited to be here trying to to help the citizens in Bledsoe County, um, employers, citizens, anyone looking for for assistance. Um, we're always willing um, to take the call and and do what we can. Right. I know. Like I say, I know uh, the. That's been a stress here to bring in more business here in Sequatchie County and Dunlap, and uh, and it, it is in Pikeville as well, and uh, so any, really, uh, truthfully, any uh, the local governments uh, or any citizen could come to y'all centers and seek help, and or even businesses mm-hmm. that were seeking em- employees. Yes, mm-hmm. and, uh, that is correct. So y'all just a kind of a, a well-rounded where you help everybody yeah i mean and that's the i think you know with us what we're trying to do a better job is coordinating the partner agencies Uh and all the services that are available um you know with being able to do some of that you help um eliminate some of the you know okay well i don't do that but this other agency down the street does let me send you down there Uh you know it's like we're trying to to get more organized with this new um um, workforce and innovation, workforce innovation and opportunity act. That's one of the strong points that they emphasize is more less siloed approach. Um, you know, I only do this, I only do this, I only do this, uh-huh. um, and more of learning about what each partner agency does and and how can we help make it easier for um, the customers to access um, those services. Um, I know you know you have to look at at your your failures as well um and thing and not necessarily failures challenges i guess i should say right um you have to look at your challenges um as well because sometimes you you learn most from those you know Uh what you need to do um and and looking at what your customers are saying and listen to them really and that's why it's been helpful for us to have some of the business leaders that we've had because they've you know expressed to us let's simplify this Let's make this as easy as possible for for us to use and, you know, the the job seeker. And some of that we're trying to do, you know, with government and and some of the red tape and bureaucracy and, you know, all the money, it's earmarked, you know, I mean, and you've got, you know, regulations that you have to follow. But it's like, how do we just manage that and and not try to push that off on others to try to manage? Um, How can we simplify that and help? So it's really we're just one big community working with each other. Yes, that's the, yeah. the ultimate goal so that we all know, you know, I know, you know, if uh, there's a food bank down the street, I have a relationship with that food bank and they know if we send a referral 
from an individual that's food insecure down to the food bank that it's a legitimate referral. That we know enough at the American Job Center to make that referral to them because we're all good partners in the system. Well, good, good. So folks, if you need a job or need training or businesses, if you need employees, uh, go to the American Job Centers. The local ones are in uh, closest to us are in Ray County and Marion County. And then they have some in um, Chattanooga and Athens and Cleveland. But our closest ones are nearby, so check them out. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to add, Michelle, before we... No, I just appreciate the opportunity to come. And, you know, we, we, want, we sincerely want to help individuals connect. Um, you know, and this is not just for, I will say the last thing, I don't want this to just appear that it's for individuals who are unemployed. It can be someone who's just looking for a better job. What right. we, we and that's you know we call that underemployed and there's a lot of those across the the nation. Um, I think about forty six percent of yes. you know population they say is what they call underemployed, meaning you know they're still struggling to make ends meet. We can be um, an avenue for those individuals to be able to connect to higher skills and higher wages, and we'd be okay. more than happy to work with them as well. Well, good. Well, folks, check them out. American Job Centers. They're there to help you and. Uh, be with you and we appreciate you watching and remember to watch us on BTC Fiber's YouTube page and also check out our Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you. Hey everybody, this is Glenn Edison from Valley Views. We appreciate you watching our shows and we would like for you to like, share, and follow us on Facebook as well as like and subscribe to our YouTube page. Brought to you by Bledsoe Telephone Cooperative your full-service telecommunications provider right here in the Sequatchie Valley.